I have been given the pleasure of welcoming Pastor Bruce Henneman back to the Bowmansdale Church of God for today's service. I clearly remember the first time I met Pastor Bruce in his office. I was popping into the church one day just to do whatever. And out from the office comes this man clad in his short sleeve shirt and his tie with this bright smile on his face and just an open welcome who was energized, ready to do the Lord's work and ready to um, accept all of those who are willing to help out. And it just was striking to me as a younger man, obviously, as we all were at the time younger. Um, <laughs> But Pastor Bruce and his wife, Tammy, and his two girls joined our congregation in 1989, and he worshiped with us and for us, led us, until 1999. Um, and during that time, as Butch had said, our congregation had grown to the point where we needed to do something. And it was under Pastor Bruce's... Um, leadership that the decision was made to expand this church sanctuary. Um, and so we thought it appropriate to have him come back, relish the fact that it is now paid for in hours, and share his message with us. Pastor Bruce today is preaching at the Landisburg Church of God, and I am sure that we will enjoy the remarks that he has prepared for us today. Before I ask him to come up here, I'm going to remind you, we'll not be greeting you at the back of the church today. We will be leading you across the street and hope that you will join us there. Pastor Bruce, please come and join. It is absolutely wonderful to be here today, and uh, I was even able to convince my entire family, minus one, uh, to be here today. So the daughters and one husband is back here. The other husband is ministering today. He is serving at the church camp and being a leader there for a youth uh, retreat. And so he is in ministry today. He just could not be here. And that's Janelle's husband, Matt. Uh, the kids even brought, my daughters brought their grandkids, my grandkids along. So they're here as well, somewhere, junior church or nursery or wherever. So it is just a blessing uh, to be here. I, I truly want to thank you for inviting me back for this celebration service. Clearly, it's a day to celebrate a milestone in the life of the Bowmansdale Church of God. I'm very excited to be a part of this day. And as I look back over the crowd, there are a handful of people who likely remember 25 years ago when we were rejoicing with the 100th anniversary of the church. We took celebration to a whole new level. Do you remember back at the 100th anniversary? We celebrated all year. Mike, I hope you found out that these people like to party around here, okay? They like to celebrate. And there was one certain occasion when you asked that I ride into Bowmansdale as the circuit-riding preacher. Merle Gutschall provided a horse, and fortunately you only put me down to the next street because I would have been saddle sore by the time I got to the church. And so I came riding as the circuit-riding preacher. Dr. Jack Parthamore, an older and much wiser pastor from years gone by, who served you back in the, I think, the 1950s, when you were on a circuit with Mount Pleasant, was the special speaker for the 100th anniversary. And that day, as Jack stood in the pulpit, he reminisced about his days in serving Bowmansdale and Mount Pleasant. And Jack recounted the many families and friends that he had made over the years while serving these churches. And I, too, recall those wonderful days of service to Bowmansdale. And if I were to begin naming names, I would surely fall short of speaking about someone who transformed me from a, a fledgling pastor right out of seminary 
into a more seasoned one. And I too would be very misplaced if I did not thank Dr. Mike Walker for being that mentor uh, for me. I'm not sure that he showed me how to fly fish so well. Uh, I think we both learned a little something off of each other, but I do remember and appreciate the days of his leadership uh, for me as he mentored me. I think that as I look back to our ministry years here at the church, we learn from each other. I want you to know that, that your pastor, and you've had several pastors since the time of my service, your pastor has learned as much from you as you have from him. That's part of the community of faith. That's part of the, the fellowship of who we are. We learn from each other. And as I served, ministry went forward, the church did grow, the people were brought to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, and the facility was bursting at its seams. Those were exciting days, were they not? The one thing that really stands out in my mind about the experience of the 100th anniversary deals with the fact that Dr. Parthamore challenged us as a congregation to continue to move forward. I can still see him in the old Bethel standing there and talking to us and preaching the word of God and, and telling us how that we had to look ahead and go forward. And his remarks were right on target. Because as I prayed about what I needed to share with you this morning as a message, I was brought to the passage of Scripture from Luke's Gospel concerning farming practices and how they are interrelated with us as Christians who are doing the work of Christ. So I would invite you to turn, if you have your Bibles handy, to the text this morning. It's Luke chapter 9, verses 57 through 62. I'm really focusing in on verse 62. So Luke chapter 9. Beginning at verse 57. As they were walking along the road, a man said to him, I'll follow you wherever you go. Jesus replied, foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. He said to another man, follow me. But he replied, Lord, first let me go bury my father. Jesus said to him, let the dead bury the dead. You go and proclaim the kingdom of God. And still another one said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me go back and say goodbye to my family. And here's the key verse. Jesus replied, No one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. I'm sure you don't remember this, but I offered to this congregation a message on this passage about 20 years ago. And I remember referencing Bob Berkheimer and John Cope in particular because they were the ultimate movers and shakers in the farming community for Bowmansdale at that time. Now, I know that I might be a little vague with some of the details, but I used an illustration about how I got my first lesson in plowing from my dad. I remember dad pointing out that I needed to get as close as possible to the very middle of the field and that needed to be plowed. And when I took my position at the middle of the field, he made me stop and just sit for a moment. And then dad went on to say, look at the other end of the field. And as closely as possible, pick out an object that appears to be very center in the field. Well, I looked at the other end of the field and I picked out a tree and commented on the particular tree seemingly standing dead center. And Dad said, good. Now put the plow down and head straight for that tree. 
Don't worry about what's going on behind you. Just drive straight forward to that tree. Without ever realizing it, my dad had just made this passage come to life for me. Now, although our farming techniques have changed dramatically over the years, there's something to be said for our need to look at the end result and press toward that end. Should take a few minute, minutes with uh, Todd back here today and say, "Hey, Todd, how do you how do you work it whenever you've cleared all your tree lines and all your fence rows and everything else? And what do you look at now to to make your straight furrow?" I think farming techniques now deal with computers, and so they do computerized and and they even have like GPS systems and trackers. It's crazy what. Our farming community is dealing with these days, but our farming techniques have changed dramatically. But the result is still the same. There's a scientific and mathematical formula which I suspect most of us are aware, and you can respond to this out loud this morning. The formula is the straightest distance between two points is. See, you could be a farmer. The concept of this formula means that the quickest way to get where you need to go is a straight line. The easiest way to get where you want to be is to go straight ahead. And you have to keep that focus before you. This concept holds true in our spiritual lives just as it does in the farming community. And if we expect to make good progress in ministry, it's always wise to have a plan to move forward with that plan. It's even wiser to hear the words of Joshua which say, God knows the plans He has for us. And we need to be in tune with what that is, what His plan is. And you as a church family did that years ago. We prayed about what to do in the process, and you've heard some of those remarks of how this building unfolded. It came through prayer, planning, preparation. I think, too, when John and Robin and possibly others were preparing for this day, I know them well enough to know that they had a plan. They put together a rough outline and finally they narrowed it down to a fine agenda and that process was very much like plowing a field. They looked to the end result and took the steps necessary to get to that end result. That is why we are here today. I'm certain that these folks considered what had taken place 15 and even 25 years ago, and maybe even reflected on what took place back beyond that. But after laying out a plan, they moved forward with the ultimate goal in mind. To bring us back to the passage, and as depicted in Luke, if those planners, those preparers, those people who were a part of organizing this day, this event, and what would take place today if they had gotten caught up in what was, we would never be able to see what could be and where we are today. But my friends, we must not stop where we are. We must go ahead. If as a farmer a person continues to focus on what is behind him as he plows, he will have a very winding furrow. You as the Bowmansdale Church of God have a history and a great legacy and some good planners. And those planners have made this happen for us today. And so this story involves many people at various times. While they have all been a part of the story, we cannot, in fact, we must not continue to look back at what was. So the challenge for you, my friends, is to focus forward on what is ahead. 
25 years ago when we were ramping up as a congregation, we were growing, things were happening, people were visiting and coming to Christ. These were exciting days. But never allow those days to make you idle in what God has called you to do today as a church. Because if you focus on what was, you will fail to see what may or could be. You know, I look across this congregation and I see an assembly of people who are believers in Christ. And as a part of our plan, we have got to have the heart of evangelism in our very being and say, this is what God wants us to do. This is where he wants us to be. He wants us to go forward, proclaim the good news so that others out there are coming into this assembly be a part of the family of God. Listen to me, my friends, this morning. Do not lose the excitement. I believe God has more in store for you in the days to come. You will continue to need a vision and planning for your future. Just as a farmer will go out and cultivate his fields annually in order to gain a harvest, you must plan annually and strategically for the future. And I trust that your future looks to the unsaved and the unchurched of your community. I believe the Apostle Paul has given us a complimentary verse to this text in Luke chapter 9 today when he wrote in Philippians 3.14, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Church, your ultimate goal is ahead of you. And you must continue to move forward with excitement and purpose so that others are brought into the kingdom of God. And may the Lord bless you as you move forward with Him, reaching the lost, the unsaved, out in the community. My friends, look ahead. Go straight forward. Follow and be obedient unto God and what he has called you to do. Let us pray. Father, I thank you so much for the Bowmansdale Church of God and what they have meant to me and my family as pastor and family in the years past. Those were good years, Lord. And we're grateful for them. For I believe much of what took place at that time as we worked together brought us to this place that we have here today. And this celebration service and the mortgage burning that will take place. Lord, you have brought us to this day. But my Father in heaven, I pray that we will never sit back and just say we have arrived. Because we have not. There is more in store for us as we go forward in Jesus' name, proclaiming the gospel of salvation to all who will hear and bringing people into the kingdom of God. My Father, I pray that you would just bless these people who have been so faithful and obedient. They have nurtured, they have loved, they have cried and sweat tears over the labor that you have called them to do here in Bowmansdale. But Lord, there's more ahead. So we go forward with your blessing, continuing the work of Christ. So we thank you and praise you for this day and for the word of God. All of this we pray and we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.